we've sent more spacecraft to study the local environment on Mars than on any other planet. We have no evidence that life exists on the Red Planet, or ever did. But that didn't stop some people from wondering. Mostly because of the pictures that NASA's Perseverance and Curiosity rovers take regularly of Mars' surface. Feel free to check them out for yourself on the Internet. They're free for anyone to see. Over time, some odd shapes have appeared here and there in these pictures, making some people believe there is some sort of creatures living there already. Back in 2008, one of the rovers took a picture of a rock that looked very much like a female figure. Other photos seem to show animal-shaped figures, utensils or other Earth-like objects. Again, there is little to no proof of this theory, as rocks can be of all sorts of shapes and sizes. But if you look at the pictures, it does make you wonder. A lot of people in the scientific community do see Mars as a better place for long-term settlements, even though our moon is closer. Firstly, because it believed there is indeed water on Mars. It's just stuck in underground frozen lakes. The soil doesn't seem to be rich in nutrients, and it may have some harmful chemicals. Moreover, on the Red Planet, the gravitational pull is only 38% of Earth's, so it's easy to carry heavy objects here. On our Moon, for comparison, the gravitational force is only about 16 and 16th percent of that found on Earth. We already have people studying how we might live on Mars right here on our planet. It's because certain regions of Earth closely mimic the harsher conditions on Mars. Davon Island, for example, is the biggest uninhabited island on our planet, located in the Canadian Arctic archipelago. It's easy to see why it's hard to live here. The soil stays frozen all year. The eastern part of the island is covered by a thick ice cap all year round. Summers here only last for less than 50 days and aren't really that warm. Not a lot of plants can grow here, so no animals can adapt to thrive and multiply. As such, the Hutton Mars project started here in 1997 to offer astronauts unique studying opportunities. There are few options here in terms of logistics and transportation, and communicating with people living outside the island is also a bit more difficult. All because of the temperature and barren soil. Think about it, if we can find solution to live here, we might be able to do it on Mars too. Regardless of our local training, the conditions on Mars are currently inhospitable. That's because it's really cold. On average, the temperature is about minus 81 Fahrenheit. Even during the summertime, it's never hotter than 86 Fahrenheit. And to top it all off, the planet's atmosphere is made of 95 and 3 tenth percent carbon dioxide, so there's literally no way we could breathe there without special devices. Mars also lacks a magnetic field on its surface, so it is attacked by the sun's radiation. Because of the temperature variations, Mars often experiences powerful dust storms, which can surround the entire planet. Technically, these storms can physically harm us, but the dust might clog electronics and render solar-powered instruments unstable. We know now that life as we know it is impossible on Mars, but did it ever exist there? This is a question long debated by scientists, since NASA's investigations have determined that some parts of Mars were habitable at one point. We don't know for how long or how far back, and just because something could have lived there, it doesn't mean it actually did. Other recent photos from Mars showed a cloudy sunset. Does that mean it also rains on the Red Planet? Well, not really. For starters, on our planet clouds are water vapors, and once it starts to rain, the water reaches the surface of our planet in liquid form. This process isn't the same on Mars. Surprisingly, there is more water in Mars clouds, but they are made of iced water. Think of them as a tiny icy fog. Combined with the thin atmosphere and cold temperatures, it keeps the clouds from ever falling to the surface. Sunsets are different here too. According to NASA specialists, there is some fine dust that makes the blue near the sun's part of the sky much more visible on Mars, so the sunsets here have more of a bluish tint. Similar to Earth, Mars is also tilted on its axis, which means it also has seasons. 
because the southern hemisphere is directed away from the sun when Mars is farthest from it. The winters here are far colder and summers way hotter. Calendars work differently on Mars too. A year here lasts for about 1 and 8800 Earth years. A day is a bit more longer than 24 hours. Even if we were to ever move to Mars, we'd still have to communicate with our Earth. It would be a bit difficult to do, since a message sent back home would take about 15 minutes to reach its destination. It's not that bad, given the entire distance, but it would make video calls kind of annoying. As difficult as it might be for now to live there, there is a lot of stuff to see. Some scientists believe that if we were completely colonize Mars, a list of locations would soon be declared national parks, like the area surrounding Olympus Mons, which is the biggest known volcano in the solar system, stretching over 16 miles. Valles Marineris would be another cool location, it's been a huge complex of valleys about the distance from Los Angeles to New York. Mars also has some cool polar ice caps, which sometimes experience dry ice snowfall. Saturn and Uranus are unique planets in our solar system because of their rings. It may not have one now, but Mars may be getting a ring of its own in the future. Don't get too excited, it's estimated it might take 10 of millions of years. Mars' largest moon, named Phobos, will be torn apart at one point. The debris resulting from it will settle in a rocky ring around Mars, resembling that of Saturn and Uranus. Speaking of moons, Mars has two of them, that we know of. Apart from Phobos, there is also one more object called Deimos. Both were discovered by an American astronomer named Days of Hull back in 1877. The scientist had almost given up his pursuit to find Mars moons. But thankfully, he was urged to continue the project. The next night he stumbled upon Deimos. Six days after that initial finding, Hall found Phobos. These two space objects may be in fact some asteroids captured by Mars gravity. Another theory suggests they formed in orbit around Mars at about the same time the planet came to be. The fact that Mars has a really weak gravity may also be the reason for this fascinating event. Mars was hit by large asteroids many years ago, just like our planet was. A lot of that debris surely went back to the surface, but some of it was ejected back into space, as Mars' gravity wasn't strong enough to pull them back. They had quite a journey, some of them even ended up on Earth. These pieces of Mars also helped us understand the planet's unique features. We've continued to send robots to the Red Planet quite successfully in the past few decades. But it still remains quite difficult to imagine people will soon land on Mars. Even considering the current rocket technology, the journey would take us six months. And that's an optimistic scenario, given everything goes well on board. After landing, humans will be exposed to deep space radiation and microgravity. Both of these have serious effects on the human body, which we've yet to figure out how to counteract. That's why research is continuously performed on the International Space Station regarding the long-term effects of microgravity. It's staring at you, and you're staring at it. A giant eye that seems to be pulling you into an abyss. You're hovering over it in your space copter. But however scared you might be, you still need to do your job. So you send your copter down to the surface of the red planet. Right, that's where you are, on Mars. But first things first, you take a moment to remember everything you know about the fourth planet from the Sun. It's the last of the inner planets. Those are the planets that lie within the asteroid belt. They're also called terrestrial, since they're made up of rocks and metals. The atmosphere of Mars is much thinner than Earth's. It contains 95% carbon dioxide and a mere 1% of oxygen. In other words, don't even think about pulling off your helmet. Anyway, there's no time to waste. You land on the surface of the planet and find yourself in a brownish-red world. That's a good thing you're wearing a spacesuit. This place is freezing cold. The thermometer sewn into the sleeve of your suit shows minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to take your first step on the Martian surface. The planet looks quite colorful, and the hue of a particular area depends on the minerals that make up the soil. The ground under your feet is covered in fine dust. 
It looks like rust. The same orange dust is in the air. Good thing you have your own supply of oxygen and don't need to breathe Martian air. The layer of this dust covering the surface of Mars can be from 6 to 40 feet thick. You hope you'll avoid getting swallowed by some Martian quicksand. You start walking, feeling very light. Mars is just 15% of our planet's volume and a mere 11% of Earth's mass. It means that gravity here is much weaker. Its pull is 38% as strong as the pull of gravity on the surface of Earth. You jump up and down and then try to run several hundred feet. Ha! You haven't even broken a sweat. What makes it harder for you to explore the place on foot is that the planet's surface is rocky, covered with craters and volcanoes, old dry lake beds, and canyons. You see something huge towering on the horizon, but you try to suppress your curiosity. You'll have enough time to figure out what it is later. Suddenly, a massive cloud appears in the distance. It looks as if a huge herd of horses is approaching you. In reality, you better get back into your copter and fly away as fast as you can. That's one of Mars's infamous dust storms. They mostly occur during the summer in the southern hemisphere of the red planet. They can sometimes cover the entire planet. And you see the largest ones from Earth. You hop into your copter and set a course for the eye that scared you so much. Winding channels that look like veins run through the eyeball. But the closer you get, the less it looks like an actual eye. Soon you realize it's a crater. It's giant, almost 19 miles across. Around the crater, which looks as if it has a pupil, there are other even bigger craters. They likely formed billions of years ago. That's when Mars had to withstand multiple attacks of space rocks. But why is the eye crater darker than the surrounding landscape? Scientists think that once, there was Martian water in the enormous pit. Remember those channels? They were likely carrying that water. And since the crater was filled with water, it stopped some substances and minerals from eroding away. Now, remember that towering something on the horizon? It's time to go and explore it. When you come close, you realize it's the largest shield volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. It's more than 370 miles in diameter, which is almost the same size as the state of Arizona. You tilt your head. Wow! The mountain is 16 miles high. It's also rimmed by 4-mile-high cliffs. To picture the sheer size of the volcano, let's make some comparisons. The largest volcano on Earth is Mauna Loa, towering around 2.5 miles above sea level and stretching 75 miles across. Sounds impressive. But the volume of Olympus Mons is around 100 times larger than that of Mauna Loa. The Martian giant could swallow the whole chain of Hawaiian islands from Kauai to Hawaii. But why is this volcano so large? It might be the result of lower surface gravity and higher eruption rates. Or the reason might be the red planet's crust, which is very different from Earth's. It's static. You see, on our planet, the crust is made of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. As plates move over hot spots producing lava, new volcanoes form, and the already existing ones become extinct. That's why lava can get to the surface through many vents. But on Mars, the crust isn't broken into the same tectonic plates as on Earth, and the lava has nothing to do but pile in one very, very large volcano. So, how about getting closer to the enormous mountain? But once you step out of your copter on Martian soil, the ground under your feet starts shaking. Well, that's a Mars quake. But how can it happen if Mars doesn't have any actively shifting tectonic plates? Specialists from NASA are sure Mars quakes occur when energy inside the planet gets suddenly released. It leads to rock fractures and cracks in the planet's crust. Another powerful jolt and one of such cracks opens right next to you. You fall to the ground, afraid to move. But soon, everything calms down. You wait for a couple of minutes, just to be sure, and get up. Oh look! Here's a perfect opportunity to explore the insides of the red planet. The crack is large enough to send a special research robot. The planet's crust is thin and consists of volcanic basalt rock. The mantle that surrounds the core of the planet is made up of thick silicates, oxygen, and some minerals. You can probably compare it with soft, rocky toothpaste. Mars's mantle is also much thinner than Earth's. 
is just 800 to 1100 miles thick. As for the planet's core, it's made mostly of iron, nickel, and sulfur and is between 900 and 1200 miles wide. This core doesn't move. That's why Mars doesn't have a planet-wide magnetic field. Unfortunately, your drone is now lost in the depths of the red planet. You leave it there and continue your exploration. Your next destination is Valles Marineris. It sounds more like an Italian red sauce, but it's actually an enormous canyon, or rather a canyon system, that runs along Mars' equator. It's as awe-inspiring as Olympus Mons, more than 2,600 miles long and over 4 miles deep. The thing is so huge, it could span the entire continental United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's make another comparison. One of the most famous canyons on Earth is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. But it's 10 times shorter and around 4 times less deep than this canyon on Mars. Some scientists think that Valles Marineris is the edge of an enormous tectonic plate. It moves so slowly that almost nothing has happened in that region over millions of years. And the movement of this plate probably began 3.5 billion years ago. Anyway, the only thing left on your today's to-do list is to visit Mars's moons. They're among the tiniest in the solar system. Phobos is the largest of the two. It orbits a mere 3,700 miles above the surface of Mars. There's no other known moon that travels closer to its mother planet. It whips around the red planet three times a day, while the second moon, Deimos, needs 30 hours to complete one orbit. Phobos is getting closer and closer to Mars, about 6 feet each 100 years. Within the next 50 million years, it'll either crash into the planet or break apart and form a ring. Happy but tired, you return to your spaceship. Tomorrow, you'll continue exploring the magnificent red planet. And who knows what discoveries are awaiting you. Dust storms on Mars can really go crazy. They hurtle through the red planet's southern hemisphere, especially during the summer. These storms can grow and encompass large areas of the planet, as happened in January 2022. Then, a dust storm covered almost twice the area of the United States. Could it be something like this that caused one of the robots we sent to Mars to go missing? The atmosphere and climate are harsh on Mars. It's mostly a desert with strong winds and average temperatures of minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. It drops down to minus 220 at the poles during the winter. A lander needs to be specifically equipped and very sturdy to withstand such conditions. But researchers thought the Beagle 2 could handle the difficult trip to the red planet. June 3, 2003. A team of researchers got one of their pioneering robots they were about to send to space ready. It was a small and compact lander called the Beagle 2. Its mission was to touch down on Mars and search for what the world has been actively looking for for decades now – life on the red planet. Now, the touchdown was due on December 25th, but the signal never came. The team tried to contact the spaceship, but at one point, they had to accept they wouldn't be able to reach it. Some thought the landing was too difficult and complex after all, so the lander crashed. But they couldn't find any technical errors. Others had a theory that the lander may have become entangled in its own parachute and fell down to the surface of Mars. Either way, the Beagle 2 was considered missing until 2015, when NASA took pictures of what could be the remains of the lost lander. They weren't just smashed debris, the components actually looked to be intact. The lander's remains were lying with its solar panels partially deployed around 3 miles away from the site where it was supposed to land. Apparently, the Beagle 2 managed to land successfully, but its radio antenna got blocked. That's why researchers couldn't control it from Earth or communicate with it. But no one knows exactly why it happened. Have you heard of a face on Mars? In the 1970s, one of NASA's spaceships took the iconic images of the Martian surface that showed a face-like formation, as you can see in the upper part of the picture. If you have a rich imagination, you can easily see a nose, two eyes, a mouth, and an unusual hairdo. Some even thought it was a monument built on the red planet by another civilization. How about some other unusual things people have found on Mars? Like Happy Face Crater. You can easily see why it has this nickname. Or rocks in different shapes. A pancake, brachiosaurus, or a fish. 
Mars also has a waffle-shaped island on its surface. It's a 1.2-mile-wide feature you can see in the area of lava flows. It might be the result of lava pushing this formation from below. It seems astronomers have also got some images of blue dunes. It's a sea of stunning dark dunes that strong winds sculpted into long lines. They surround the planet's northern polar cap and cover a region as large as Texas. The red planet is usually known for its brown sandy dunes, so these ones certainly came as a surprise. In reality, though, they're not really blue. If you could visit Mars right now just to take a look, you'd see that these dunes appear brown and orange like the rest. And the picture is a false color image. Scientists often use false colors to highlight differences in something. For example, here, it's the difference in depth. Also, the biggest valley on Mars is so large it could eat our Grand Canyon for breakfast. It's a fascinating system of canyons 2,500 miles long called Valles Marineris, and it's over 10 times as long as the Grand Canyon. Now, if you could stretch this Martian canyon, it would go from coast to coast of the entire United States. Since Mars doesn't have any active plate tectonics, no one knows for sure how this canyon formed. One theory says a chain of volcanoes located on the other side of Mars, the one that includes Olympus Mons, bent the crust from the opposite side of the planet. This powerful force caused cracks in the Martian crust as well as activated enormous amounts of water lying under the surface. This water then emerged and carved the rock away. The force activated glaciers too, and they possibly created new pathways in this gigantic canyon system. Volcanoes on the Martian surface could have erupted about 50,000 years ago, although the most powerful eruptions happened 2-3 to three billion years ago. But the planet doesn't have active volcanoes today. Most of the heat stored in its interior during the planet's formation has been lost. So now, Mars's outer crust is way too thick for the molten rock to reach the surface. But a long time ago, eruptions formed giant volcanoes, and these volcanoes most likely had an important role in melting ice deposits, which released floods of water onto the Martian surface. Now Mars has a thin atmosphere with a volume of gas, mostly carbon dioxide, less than 1% of Earth's. But 4 billion years ago, it was way warmer and wetter than now. Its atmosphere must have been thicker back then, too. That's why it could create a powerful greenhouse effect and trap sunlight. Mars also has a powerful magnetic field. Similar to Earth's, it formed because of the currents of molten metals in the planet's core. But unlike our home planet, Mars lost its magnetic field after its core had cooled down. And without it, the planet didn't have any protection from the solar wind, which is a stream of charged particles flowing from the sun. The solar wind pulled away most of Mars's atmosphere in just a couple of hundred million years, give or take. This is what makes those powerful Martian dust storms even more intense. Mars has a fascinating history. Judging by the planet's glaciers, Mars has probably gone through multiple ice ages, just like Earth. A team of researchers got images of about 60,000 Martian rocks. Rocks were different in size and distributed randomly, which means they probably formed during different ice ages. Glaciers hide their own stories, too. Who knows what kinds of gases, rocks, or even microbes could be trapped inside. Now, if you could get into a time machine and stop it 4 billion years ago, on Mars of course, the chances are you'd see spectacular scenes of flooding. Maybe there would even be some form of life on the planet's surface. A strong meteorite impact that formed the red planet's Gale crater could be something that triggered that mega flood. After that collision, the temperatures on the planet got insanely hot. This caused the melting of all that ice that was stored on the Martian surface at that time. The flooding was so massive, it changed the geological structure of the planet's surface. It carved out big ripples, as well as waves in the sedimentary rock. Now, speaking of water, vapor has been noticed escaping the atmosphere of Mars. Also, researchers have found some evidence of water flowing on the planet's surface. There are dark streaks in the soil. They seem to get bigger in the summer and shrink over the winter. There are numerous dried-out valleys and river channels on the planet. It's possible that liquid water once flowed there. Now, most of it could be locked up in ice caps or even hidden under the surface. More and more things hint that Mars used to be habitable. 
Mars is the only planet we know about where only robots live. Five rovers make up the Martian population. Those are Perseverance, Opportunity, Spirit, Sojourner, and Curiosity. These robots are there to take pictures and samples of soil and air, and maybe even find life on the red planet. And someday, we may reunite with them on Mars. Who knows? Oh, and by the way, if you really could get into a time machine and stop it 4 billion years ago on Mars, then I'd like to buy you lunch and talk about it. My treat!